How do new subduction zones form? A subduction zone is where an oceanic plate, or lithosphere, sinks into the mantle. The sinking of oceanic lithosphere powers plate tectonics, and is where the most powerful earthquakes, tsunamis, and volcanic eruptions occur. In this video, we show one way that a new subduction zone can form when dense oceanic lithosphere sinks adjacent to a major lithospheric weakness such as a transform fault or fracture zone. We show the results of a two-dimensional computer model generated by Professor Taras Garia's group at ETH Zurich in Switzerland. This is how the experiment is set up. Notice that the box is 5,000 kilometers wide, but only the middle 800 kilometers are shown. Similarly, the box is 1,200 kilometers deep, but only the top 220 kilometers is shown. Thin young lithosphere is found to the left of the fracture zone, because this lithosphere has a thin mantle root, shown here in dark blue, it is buoyant compared to the underlying asthenosphere, shown in purple. Thick old lithosphere lies to the right of the fracture zone. Because it has a thick mantle root, it is slightly denser than the underlying asthenosphere. This lithosphere is gravitationally unstable and should sink, but its strength makes sinking difficult. Let's take a closer look at the formation of this subduction zone. Slowly, the old lithosphere begins to sink next to the lithospheric weakness. Eventually, the asthenosphere begins to flow over the sinking slab, where it partially melts to form new oceanic crust by seafloor spreading. This eventually becomes the forearc. It is also where most ophiolites form. As the slab continues to sink, it encounters increasing resistance from the underlying mantle and begins to move down dip. This is where true subduction begins. Once true subduction begins, seafloor spreading in what becomes the forearc stops and the underlying mantle begins to cool. As subduction continues, the magmatic arc begins to form about 100 kilometers above the subducting slab. This is the situation we see in mature subduction zones, which are very stable systems and can exist for tens or even hundreds of millions of years. We hope you enjoyed this explanation about one way that a new subduction zone can form. If you want to learn more, please read the papers listed at the end of this video. If you like this, please consider subscribing to the UTD Geoscience Studios YouTube channel.